evening, everyone. Um, my name is Jean Lambert. I'm Green Party member of the European Parliament for London. And welcome to this event, which we hope will be the, the start of, of a series. The background to this was uh, a discussion I had with the constituents quite some time ago from somebody whose heritage is, is from India. And he said he felt that it was very important for London's different communities to know about the problems of climate change in their sort of country of background and, that it was, and what they could do about that and that it was also important for others in London to understand what is happening in other countries and the effect that we have. I'd very much like to start by warmly welcoming Dr Samuel. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jean. If we continue at the rate that we have been doing for the last 150 years, then in the next few decades we're looking at considerably higher temperatures which may have very adverse impacts on human societies generally, unless we do something about it. And, and since this is a global problem, we need all the countries of the world to come together and do something. A handful of countries aren't going to do it on their own. We have built up into the atmosphere a, a warming that is now, over the next 10, 20 years, inevitable and unavoidable. In other words, if we were to reduce our emissions to zero today, the next 20 years' worth of warming won't be affected at all. It will get hotter. So we now have to deal with what are we going to do about that. In the next decade or two, we're going to have to ramp up our efforts at adaptation. And that it isn't any longer just about adaptation in poor countries being affected. Even rich countries are going to be affected. And they're going to have to start thinking about adaptation. And, and more recently, we have seen countries in Europe, including the UK, uh, developing adaptation plans uh, as well. And since Copenhagen, what we've had is a sort of picking up the pieces. We, we in Copenhagen, we had the view that it was an all or nothing approach. If, if nothing was agreed until everything was agreed, and because everything wasn't agreed, nothing was agreed. Uh, since then, in Cancun, the year later, and Durban, a year after that, uh, there's been a much more pragmatic attitude of saying, let's agree what we can agree, and postpone and, and, and leave what we can't agree to later, which is a much less ambitious goal, but at least it's more realistic. So it's about an issue that is caused, a problem that is caused by and large by the rich, be they rich countries or rich people, even in poor countries. And the people that are going to suffer the consequences of this are poor, poor people in poor countries and even poor people in rich countries. And that's a fundamental injustice. That's not that. The moral issue of injustice is something that many more people can relate to than purely the environmental bits of mitigation and adaptation. All countries are going to have to face the impacts of climate change sooner rather than or later. Bangladesh is facing it sooner, and what they learn in order to deal with it is going to be valuable for everybody, including the rich. I'll stop there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We have already now very clearly and um, as i said more water during uh, monsoon time we have more disasters and we have more droughts and this is now for instance for the government of india but also for the government of bangladesh are very dramatic issues now when we see this this is a is a world map we see that the south asian countries are by far the most vulnerable to, uh, to these floods, because floods in South Asia means immediately enormous damage of goods and human, uh, human beings, much more than uh, any, anywhere else. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Had we stabilized and begun to reduce global greenhouse gas emissions as short a time ago as 2007, the annual target that the Annex 1 countries, the industrialised countries, would have to hit for year-on-year -year reductions of greenhouse gas emissions would have been 3%. If we delay until next year, that figure rises to 6% year-on-year total reductions. Leave it till 2020, which, when you look at the nature of the negotiations, it seems might be our earliest hope for a new comprehensive agreement. And that figure rises to 15%. History actually tells us that we can make these radical extreme changes and that we can be the better for it. I think 
Given what you've heard from Salim and Andreas in the last hour or so, it's our duty to get on and make that happen. Thanks, Jean. Thank you. Thank you. But the reality is that the roles of most of the people who are having to really deal with the effects of climate change, the actual adaptation that Dr Huck was referring to, huge numbers of, the huge percentage of the people dealing with that are women. Whether you look at a Somali woman who's fleeing famine with six or seven children in her care, or whether you look in Thailand, where I've spent quite a bit of time, where it's always been the traditional role for women to actually make the money for the household. There's an enormous amount of goodwill out there. Lots of people want to do things, but it's not actually down to individual and the effort in the end. We have to create the systems, we have to reduce the waste, we have to act in ways that make it easy, possible, for people who are carrying so many other loads, particularly women who are carrying so many other loads, to be able to make the difference. We need everyone together, working together. This it nearly needs to be a community effort here in London, as Dr Huck said, you know, in Bangladesh, you know, the rickshaw drivers are, are talking about it and doing it. We need to get a communal effort on a local level, on a national level and on an international level. And as we've seen tonight, how desperately important it is, we all need to get together and make this change. I came because I think that climate change has slipped off the radar politically recently. There's a really good uh, panel of speakers and I think everyone had something to contribute on climate change and, and I think it's, it was a valuable debate, it was really worthwhile. Interesting lineup. I like the way it connects the different parts of the world and tries to bring those together and explain how climate change is something that will affect them all. I think I learned from the whole experience that Bangladesh has a, has a wonderful climate change strategy and you know they, they, they're doing quite a lot to tackle the issues. Uh, what people have been saying to me was that they felt there was a lot of real content there. That even people who've been in this a long time found new things and slightly different angles. But also because it's very much linked with the Bangladeshi side as well, we would hope that people have also learnt more about what's actually happening in one of the countries which is most affected by climate change.